Now, one good thing that we have here that's very fortunate is that our students will intervene and separate them a lot of times. And our students will pull them apart before they even get started. And I like to think because they want them to keep them here because they know what's going to happen if they do start swinging. So we do have that, that if those kids are getting there, a lot of times they're intervening and separating. But we have to have an adult's eyes on it, because a lot of times there's some verbal stuff before it gets started, and then we can get there and, and uh, separate them before it gets started. But supervision, 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 supervision. And I'll be honest with you, that's more important than education, to be totally honest. You know, while we educate them sometimes, you know, I ain't feeling it that day, so I hope the administration don't come in here. I'm going to pass our work. She's back. But in supervision, we can't take a break like that. As soon as we do, then that's when something happens. And I always talk about court. I don't want to go to court. I don't want to go to court. And Ms. Ogden shared with me, um, uh, anyway, Ms. Ogden took her daughter up to enroll her in the University of Georgia and just happened to be by one of the parents whose child went to the school in Florida that had the uh, shoe. And she was telling me about that this morning and was saying that the parent was telling her that her daughter's friend had got shot, had got shot nine times. And how the school didn't have any type of policy as far as, you know when I tell y'all, when you leave, take your grade book, and you got to be accountable for your kids, didn't have any of those type policies. So the boot got dropped off by like a taxi and had on the chief, walked all the way up to school and the security guard. He just did, came in with the kids. He didn't go in, he stayed outside and didn't go in and engage him. Yeah, so he, well, but, the, but the shooter was a former student, so he, he just walked doors not locked, he just walked in the building with the, with the rest of the kids. And then when he starts shooting, everybody starts scattering. Uh, according to Ms. Ogden and the lady, that they had no procedures. And parents had to wait hours and hours just to find out if their child had been hurt or even where their child was at. Which is, which is to me, is, is you know, you have to have some kind of plan in place. So what happens if you're not used to that level of violence? If you're not used to that or you haven't had training for that level of violence, what do you do? You freeze. And then you find yourself going in circles because you don't know what to do. So when we call a drill or a disrupt, Please keep those things in mind. I know you need to get to this unit. And I know you need to, you know, I got a test tomorrow. <laughs> but these things are necessary. Because obviously, that um, is not going to happen to us. Or, no, or that type of thing doesn't, you know, doesn't happen to us is obviously what, probably what the thought process was. Yeah, I was just talking, Ms. Ogden, share with us what the lady told you. Well, Ainsley met a friend, and I didn't ask. She just volunteered the information, but she was like, well, you know my daughter's in therapy, and I'm glad she met your daughter. And I was like, oh, okay. And, uh, so she said, you know my daughter went to the school in Florida where they had the shoot, and I was like, no, ma'am. Anyway, she was tearing up, and she was telling me about it, and she said, um, you know, they don't even have student IDs. So she sat there for hours and hours and hours waiting to see if her daughter was going to come through the door. So the kids that were shot, they didn't even know who they were because they didn't have an ID. And then I said, well, what about metal detectors? She said, we don't have metal detectors. I said, well, we have metal detectors. We have student IDs. I said, every visitor that comes through our place has to have an ID. And she said, well, it's a little too late for us. And um, she said that her best friend, he shot one time, and she managed to go around the hallway. But anyway, um, she got shot eight times. Like he made sure that, but he was a little disturbed, but um, his mother had passed away, and 
somebody taking him in and his girlfriend broke up with him. And then he got expelled from school, wasn't allowed on campus because he had behavior problems. And she said he'd been canceled, but that's the straw that broke the camel's back. So the bell rang and he just walked in. He parked his car on campus. He walked in with the kids. There wasn't no metal detectors. And she said he just opened fire. And like the teachers, they, the teachers didn't even know the kids that, you know, who was alive and who was dead because <coughs> they had dismissed and they had just pulled them in there and they had no plan. You know, you know, out west, this happened last year, a special needs teacher had been estranged from her husband. He walked right through the front door, walked up and said he'd see his wife, walked right up to her. She was leaving the class at like fourth grade special needs, just shot her point point blank range and killed a little boy sitting behind her. He shot through her. Kid. But Dr. Gray said that the um, like the administrators could get sued as well as the school, and that's what's happening right now. Those parents are really. Uh, that's the part that the news don't tell you. Mm -hmm. the, the, the fallout from that. And if you don't have a plan, if you don't, everything is good until something happens. If you don't have a plan, <laughs> you have bully. If somebody's walking in and saying something happens, Somebody's walking here and say, what are your bullying policies? You know, and then they have to ask every one of us, do y'all know what your what's your bullying policy? So just because I can say it, then they'll go to Sarge if he don't know it, then they can say, well, you got a bullying policy, but only the administration knows what it is. That's why you gotta look at those handbooks. That's why you gotta read those handbooks. And you sign off on them. Because we never know what happened. If you get questioned, you can sign up on that handbook, and you had to familiar, familiarize yourself with it, then you, you got an issue. And I say this stuff not to discourage you, not to scare you. This is just a fact, and this is for your own protection. And I know that if you go to other schools, I know, I know what they say. Bruce High School is ridiculous. Y'all don't run it like, you know, it's ridiculous. Or, or, you know, we had an administrator from another school come up in here. She didn't have her license. We sent her to the car to get her license because that's our policy. Of course, she goes back, ah, uh, that's ridiculous. They know who I am. But what she don't know is she's telling everybody we follow our policies and procedures as they align. And it doesn't matter whether we agree with them or not. You know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether we agree with them or not. These are for our protection. Now, I know I told you the story when the carnival came in the town, and the older gentleman came to the school to pick up one of our students that he had met at the carnival. This is true stuff, y'all. You ain't telling us that. I ain't telling you about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all that story. <laughs> Me and the older gentleman at the carnival. Well, he comes up here trying to sign her out. And I can tell you how long ago, Miss Trussell, y'all remember Miss Trussell? She was a receptionist at the time. And thank God she followed our policies and procedures as we had them laid out. So then she calls me, I come out, and as soon as I walk out here, I, yeah, this is bogus right here. So as I start questioning him, I get the girl up there, and I start questioning him, and he's posing as her grandfather. And she's standing there talking about, yeah, this is my grandfather. Now, if I would have said, oh, OK, I was like, no. And I told him, if you don't get out of this school, I'm going to call the law. And he just and left. And then I called her parents and I had a conference with her parents about what she just tried to do. So, frankly, y'all, I don't care what others say about us, but every time I look at the news, I say, thank God that we have that in place. Every time I look at the news, I say, thank God for those medals. Thank God for dress codes. Yes, sir. I mean, I always kind of assumed that it was like some form of discrimination.
Well, sometimes there is a requirement, but then it comes to will and skill. Like, are you going to do it or are you not going to do it? You know, you have laws, like you said, you have laws in place that you must do this and you must do that. And then sometimes it depends on, we put all the interpretation to it, and then it depends on if we're going to do it or we put it on the back burner to do it some other time. Then all of a sudden something happens, and that's the only time it's questioned. You know, don't, nobody questions whether we're doing or what our, what our uh, bullying policy is or what our uh, metal detector, nobody questions that until something happens. Then when something happens, they want to question that one event. Because think about it, when you hear something in the news or something happens and you don't have a reason why, there's no reason why it happens. You know, if, if something catastrophic happens and nobody knows why it happens, what brings everybody at ease? Once somebody gets blamed, oh, that's why it happened. But if something happens and nobody knows why it happens, then there's an unease because nobody has, nobody knows. Nobody knows where it came from. But after it happens, I say, well, it's because Miss Johnson wasn't at her door. Shame on Ms. Johnson. She should have been at her door. If she'd been at her door, that would have never happened. And what it does, it calms everybody down because we got somebody to blame. <coughs> and that's society. When a young lady got jumped on here and had the brain, uh, the brain thing happen, you know, everybody wanted to be, once, once you have somebody to blame, and now the next thing is to go to court and test our policies and our procedures. And, and like I told you, thank God our teachers were where they were supposed to be. There's none of them in here. But they separated us. Didn't even let us talk to one another. And I was the first one on the stands. And the first thing the attorneys asked me, where were your teachers? Sir, they were at the door. <laughs> Where were they supposed to be? They were supposed to be at the door. They were on their post, and I was able to talk it out. The neighbor around there, Miss Fair, she didn't know what I said. Where were you? I was at my door. It was at lunch. We, you know, kids would, you know, boom, boom, boom. Then they brought in Miss Jackson. She didn't know what I said or what Miss Fair said. And they asked the same question. They were trying to find an inconsistency. That's, that's real life. So just, just stay professional. Don't put yourselves in those situations because these are life-changing, life-altering situations. And yeah, we have Paige, but like I said, Paige don't pay the bill. They'll represent you. They don't pay the bill, okay? And Mr. Ben, don't, don't change your mind about education. <laughs> 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 These are just, because anything you're going to, they're going to have any policies and procedures and rules and regulations. I don't want you to talk out of your But again, as far as what we're going to be looking for, re-familiarize yourself with your teach standards and your rubric, because when we do our walkthroughs, these are the things that we're looking for. Okay? These are the things that we're looking for. It's, it's, it's not a it's, it, you know, it's not a uh, guessing game. You look at your rubric and what it says to be proficient, what it says to be exemplary, what it says to be uh, ineffective, and what it says it needs, needs to develop. When we walk in there, we take this rubric and we look at what's going on. And then we, you know, one, two, three, or four. So if I walk in there and I see a one going on, <laughs> Get a one. Don't get mad. Now you come and talk to me about it because it might have been something going on or whatever. But don't get upset. And I'll even, you know, we tell administrators sometimes we'll even give you a do-over because it's not a gotcha thing. We'll give you a do-over and give you an opportunity. But if I keep coming in there and it's the same thing, okay, now you hurt the kids. All right? Now you hurt the kids. And, 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 you know, at the end of the year, and I mean this with all my heart, I 
going to keep every one of y'all here. At the end of the year, when those contracts come out, I always pray that everybody do those contracts and turn them in. I don't want to lose nobody. But if you're not here for children, and you're not here educating these kids, then I'm going to put the pressure on you Do you head on up out of here. And that ain't a personal statement. I think all y'all know I'll support you and help you if you got something going on with your kids. If you got, man, I'm the first one to say, yep, do it. We'll fix it however. But if you ain't educating these children, and you ain't doing what you're supposed to do, and it's a real simple formula. If teaching is going on, then learning is happening. If learning ain't going on, then ain't no teaching happening. We're going to focus on student-centered and engaging lessons, and that's nothing new. It's always been student-centered, and it's always been engaging lessons. But y'all got to remember, we didn't, we didn't, on our uh, with East Square School, we talked about that. So we got two things on our contract. It's either get our milestones to a 3% um, pass rate every year, increase 3%, or meet the, um, um, what is it? Beat the odds. And we didn't do either. We didn't do either one. So y'all know I go into, you know, I go into a different set because we cannot, we know we didn't do 3%, we know we didn't beat the odds, and we're going to walk in here and keep doing things the same way that we've done them, and then think that all of a sudden, the next year, it's going to increase. I was talking to Coach Ingram the other day, and we used to run the spread. Y'all been to football games. We ran the spread all day. Well, a couple years ago, we done went to two state championships. We done led the, set the history record and scored and everything. Well, a couple years go by, we still running the spread, but it's not as successful as we hoped it was because when we evaluate our players and we look at our positions, then we see that, okay, well, I can't keep doing the same thing that I'm doing. So then what do you do? You go into research and you go to talking folks. You look at, you look at your personnel, which are your students, and then you adjust. Then you, then you get an offense that's going to allow you to be successful. Same thing in the classroom. I can't wait till we kick off to see this new offense that we're running. But what do we do? We evaluated our personnel. It's no different in, in, in uh, drama. I ain't going to, Mr. Price, I'm just walking in the first student sit there, okay, you're going to be my lead. You know, if I got solos, and I don't know nothing about drama. But if I got a solo, Gracie Brown ain't gonna sing my solo. <laughs> right? Because I've evaluated my students and I see what their strengths are. And I'm gonna differentiate to make my students successful. If I'm a wrestling coach and I'm talking about a hole or a technique, and all I'm doing is up at the board talking about being a technique coach. Take away. I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we get up there talking about a single leg, and all I'm doing is talking about the single leg. Explain us what a single leg is, coach. Oh, uh, you just attack one leg to get a takedown. Okay. You attack one leg to get a takedown. All right? So I'm up here talking about all you do on a single leg is attack one leg and get a takedown. Well, now the competition comes. For him, it's a wrestling match. For us, it's the milestone or the SLO. 